You already heard from me about this issue, so I'll keep my comments short. I want you to hear from the broad coalition of parent uh, and child, children advocates that we have today to speak about this bill that is of great concern. The main message we want to get out today is that this bill that is being made through the legislature is being uh, advanced on false pretenses and on frankly disinformation. There is a false narrative that there is an agenda to somehow hurt, target, or harm uh, children uh, based on their gender ideology. That is, cannot be further from the truth. There's also a false argument that this is designed to uh, forcibly out children. That's also not true. What we blew up here, we want you to see clearly, what are the policies that are being attacked? Uh, Chino board policy has been used as the poster child for the basis of this bill. I want you to see their policy. Their policy is right there. It does not require parental notification unless the child... That side the policy. Oh, sorry, that side. It does not require parental notification until and unless the child themselves requests that their gender be changed on school records. It is up to the child to decide when and how parents get notified. But if the school is going to be involved in changing their gender, then you better damn well believe the parents are going to be involved as well. And so with that, uh, I also want to state, where did this start from? This started with the Secretary of Education putting out, I assume it's here, a memo that told schools that children have a right to privacy from their parents and you are not to share information with them. That is felt false. That is not true. That is not supported by any law. And it's certainly not supported by our Constitution. So that's where this started. Everything after that has been in response to this really reckless, dangerous, undemocratic policy that's been pushed by Tony Thurman, who I hope will never be governor of this state. So with that, Amen. is our leader here? He's not here, so we're going to jump to Chino Valley School Board President, Sonia Shah. Oh, Gallagher is here. Let me welcome our Assembly Republican leader. Uh, thank you, Assemblyman. It's good to be with you all today. You know, as we stand here this morning, standing for parents' rights, um, and that's what this has always been about, and let's remember where we actually began. These policies came about because the Department of Education was telling school districts that you must keep secrets from parents. Um, and they still are. It's on their website. It's on the California Department of Education's website that if a child tells them not to tell the parents, you cannot tell the parents. You are required not to. Here's the problem. Where does that come from? Is it in state statute anywhere? No. Is it in any law in the state of California that teachers, administrators, school officials should be keeping secrets from parents about what's going on with their kid? No. It's not in there. But through this basically dark guidance, you know, this underground regulation, they've been telling school districts that they must do this. So some school districts fought back and said, no, this isn't the law. And in fact, we have local control because school districts do have local control over education decisions. And they can pass policies for how they're going to interact in their communities and how they can interact with parents. And so they were bold and brave. And they said, we're going to do this and make sure that parents are notified in these circumstances. And what did they get in return? They're getting now sued. They're getting shut down. They're actually winning these court cases, though, aren't they? Because you know? when we go to court, when we go to court, we're finding out that actually the law is that parents are in control. That's the law. That the parents have the right to direct the well-being and up upbringing and the education of their child. That is the law of the land. And so we believe that that is ultimately what will uh, win in the end here. Um, this bill that is being proposed is certainly the antithesis of that, trying to ban these policies. And I'll end with this. The other thing that this bill is, is very ironic. And, and I'm glad that we have Ms. Tapia with us uh, this morning, um, who was, as, an, as an educator, as a teacher, said, no, I'm not going to do that. That's wrong. You know, and I can't in good conscience go, go along with these policies that aren't supported by statute, that are you know, underground regulations, that, but, but more importantly are wrong uh, by not informing parents and have the courage to say, no, I'm not going to do that. This bill right now provides protections for educators who will go along with that policy, right, and say, hey, no retaliation 
if you don't inform parents. And I've asked the authors, I said, how about in the other alternate? What if teachers say, look, I'm going to tell parents, any protections for them from retaliation? Any protections in those instances? They still haven't done it. They don't make it both ways. It's only if you go along with their underground policies. You know, I mean, it's unbelievable, right? But thank God that there are teachers who are standing up. And that's exactly what happened to her. As, actually, as far as I know, the only one who's actually been retaliated against is her for having the courage to stand up. And so, look, we, we know these policies are wrong. We are going to continue to fight against them. My hope is that the, the voices of parents and educators and so many who have said, look, we, this is not the right policy. We need to be involving parents. And think about that. Shouldn't that be the default that we involve parents? Instead, their policy is the opposite. In their world, all parents have the potential to be evil and bad influences on a child. And all teachers and administrators and counselors at schools are always good for the kids, because that's what they're saying. You shouldn't tell parents because maybe some parents you know, might do something bad to that child or something, right? Well, if somebody's being abusive, they're mandatory reporters, and they can mandatory report that, right? But always the default should be parents are in control, parents are informed. Um, and that's what I think is just so wrong about what they're trying to do with this policy. So anyway, we are going to be fighting against that. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, thank you for so many who have been involved in, in this fight up and down the state. Uh, we are going to continue to call out this terrible policy and stand up for what's right and stand up for parents. Now we have Chino Valley Unified School District President Sonia Shaw. Good afternoon, guys. My name is Sonia Shaw. I'm the president of Chino Valley Unified School Board. And today I stand before you to confront a critical and unconstitutional threat to parental rights, AB 1955. This bill strips parents of their fundamental rights and places our children in grave danger. For 10 years, the California Bar Department of Ed has perpetrated a massive lie falsely claiming that teachers must withhold critical information from parents under a phantom state law that grants children's privacy rights against their own parents. Let me be clear, no law, no law exists. Schools were manipulated into deceiving parents, but the truth has been exposed. Teachers and parents fought back with lawsuits and our board, along with a handful of others, implemented a policy demanding honesty with parents. Additionally, our districts took a bold stance against the prevailing policy adopted by most school districts across California, which mandated secrecy regarding sensitive matters. We rescinded that outdated approach and introduced a policy ensuring transparency, declaring that we will not keep secrets from parents. This led to the political cartel of Bonta, Thurman, and the rest of them by suing us in court. We are still in the middle of a legal battle over what they call an illegal policy. All while now they champion AB 1955 to make their unlawful legislation law. Now make it make sense, guys. They're doing this because they are losing in court and they know it and they're desperate. It, AB 1955 was pushed through with a gut and amend tactic to remove local control so they can take control of your children and exit parents out of their constitutional right. This eradicates parent parental involvement, violates FERPA, the California Constitution, and the U.S. Constitution. I swore an oath to uphold the Constitution, including the 14th Amendment, which includes parents' rights in the upbringing of their children, and so did many of them. The political cartel coined terms like forced outing policy when it wasn't in effort, an effort to intimidate and silence parents and schools. But let me be clear, the parental notification policy is not an outing policy. The notification, as Bill pointed out, is only in place when a child wants to change their official or unofficial records. Now you tell me, how can a child come out to thousands of other peers and the staff, but not their own parents? We've witnessed the havoc special interest groups and unions have wreaked on few board members that dare to implement similar policies. Pay attention, your kids are their target. 
Moreover, I will say this is right out of the page of a Marxist playbook. We the people will not stand by and do nothing. Interfering with our children was a big mistake. Let me say, these special interest group supporters have threatened my life along with other people's lives and that should shiver that may, that should make any parent shiver because if they want our life for standing in front of your child, imagine how bad they want your child. And Scott Weiner and to all the others who dare to claim that their children are ours. These are not your children, period. I urge every parent and resident to join us in this fight. Together, we will hold accountable those who seek to erode, erode our rights and manipulate our children. Let our voices unite to defend truth, transparency, and the sacred bond between parents and child. They picked this fight, and they're going to lose this battle. And remember, Proverbs 31, 8, 9, we are the voice for the voiceless. Next, we have former teacher Jessica Tapia. Hello, my name is Jessica Tapia. Early last year, I stood in front of the very high school I was fired from. As Bill Asaley hosted a press conference on AB 1314, a bill that was supposed to bring honesty and trust between parents and schools. During that press conference, I shared about how I had just been fired as a teacher for saying that I would not lie to parents or withhold crucial information from them about their child's well-being surrounding any desire to be the opposite gender. I knew I was wrongfully fired because my school district put in writing that they could not accommodate my religious beliefs when I let them know why I would not be able to comply with these various transgender policies. Myself and Advocates for Faith and Freedom filed a lawsuit against my school district, and just last month we settled my case for $360,000, which is three times what they owed me since terminating me. So here is the point I want to make. Teachers don't lie. And any teacher who is willing to lie has no business educating children. So how many moral teachers will it take to stand up and say, I will not lie to parents? get fired for refusing what might soon be a law, sue their school district or the state for that matter, for the powers at play to realize that a policy like AB 1955 is going to cause more harm and no good. It is going to cost districts financially as more teachers rise up like myself. It is going to cause schools to lose the very teachers who parents want teaching their children because those teachers with morals are quitting in droves right now at the thought of foregoing their personal beliefs and lying to a precious child and his or her parents. The educators with morality in this state will not tolerate being compelled to lie. Our rights do not end at the schoolhouse gate and our rights are not second class to any policy or law surrounding the special rights of gender identifying minors. Parents have the God-given and constitutional right to know everything that is going on with their child and government education will not get in the way of that. Thank you. Now we have Orange County School Board member, Orange County School Board of Education member, Mary Barkey. Thank you, great to be here today. My, my concern is that we're teaching children to lie. Since when is it okay to teach children to lie and of all people to lie to their parents? And furthermore, we're asking parents, or I'm sorry, we're asking teachers to lie to parents. That is never, never a good thing. Teachers and parents have a very special relationship and when you ruin that relationship, it, it doesn't have a good ending. But the biggest concern is that, that parents need to be in their children's lives. We love our children. Nobody loves children like parents do. We're always there for them. We always will be. And it, it's proven that when parents are in children's lives, the children thrive. So we need to make sure that we are not asking children to lie to their parents, that we're not asking teachers to lie to parents, because when there are lies, there's never a good ending. So I hope that we will not encourage anyone to lie. Now I want to welcome uh, Pastor Tim Thompson. Hi, I'm Tim Thompson. I'm a senior pastor of 412 Church in Temecula Valley. And I want to let you know that approximately 25 million California residents claim the Christian faith. That is almost seven out of every 10 people that live here in California. For those 200, I'm sorry, for those 25 million citizens, our holy scriptures outline for us the guidelines for how we are to navigate the various issues that life throws at us. 
when considering those guidelines, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 19, tells us to, that we shall teach these guidelines to our children, speaking with them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. The whole idea with that is, all aspects of your life, no matter where you are, no matter what the situation is, we're always, as Christians, supposed to be teaching our children the guidelines that God has instituted. This is America. In America, parents have the right to direct the upbringing of their children. And as Christian Americans, we have an obligation, a religious obligation, to instruct our children in all aspects of their lives, including our children's sexuality, gender, and even their gender roles. What we're hearing from members of our state legislature is that we cannot be trusted with this responsibility. We're hearing that they believe the state knows better how to raise our children than we do. And that children who are not yet old enough to get a tattoo or drink a beer or buy a gun or serve in our armed forces or in many cities across this state even stay out after 10 o'clock can make decisions about their health that will affect the rest of their lives without first consulting the very people who are held responsible for their lives, the parents. AB 1955 seems to deliberately limit the Jewish and Christian parents' ability to carry out their religious obligation as it pertains to the context of school environment. And I'm respectfully calling on all members of our state legislature and our governor to say no to this very dangerous bill. Thank you. Now I want to welcome Family Council President Jonathan Keller. Thank you, Assemblyman. My name is Jonathan Keller. I'm the president of California Family Council, and we represent tens of thousands of citizens and families across the Golden State. And I stand before you on behalf of those families in strong opposition to AB 1955. This is a misguided piece of legislation that threatens the fundamental rights of all Californians. It seeks to abolish local parental notification policies, and it is creating a wall of secrecy between schools and families. This could lead to situations where parents are unaware of their child's struggles, such as bullying or mental health issues, until they escalate to a point that may be too late. This bill isn't just a matter of policy. It is an assault on family integrity and trust. Parental rights are not a privilege that the state gives us. They are the cornerstone of our society and vital for the well-being of all of our children. AB 1955 would propose to sever this crucial link between parents and schools, legalizing the withholding of crucial information about a child's mental health and gender identity. This defies both logic and the natural order of family life. Our coalition of parents, educators, faith leaders, we implore the Assembly Education Committee to do the right thing and reject this dangerous bill. We stand for transparency for trust within families, for the right of parents to be involved in the pivotal decisions affecting their child's life. Consider the wisdom found in Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he or she should go. Even when they are old, they will not depart from it. This sacred duty falls to parents who cannot fulfill their role if they are kept in the dark about their own child's struggles and experiences. AB 1955 would set a dangerous precedent and undermine the very fabric of family unity. It assumes that schools, not parents, know what's best for children. This is a grave miscalculation that could have lasting, detrimental effects on family dynamics and children's overall well-being. So once again, I urge all of our legislators to contemplate the far-reaching consequences of this rushed and unnecessary legislation. Let's not drive a wedge between parents and children. Instead, Let's champion policies that fortify family bonds and uphold parental rights. For the sake of our children and the future of our great state, I call upon you to reject AB 1955. Okay, now last but certainly not least, Aaron Friday with Our Duty. There's Aaron. Hi, my name is Erin Friday, and I'm a lifelong Democrat who voted for same-sex marriage. AB 1955 is a double secret bill. Secret one is that parents will not be consulted before other adults, adults who are in the child's life for a matter of a few hours a week, 
over less than a year, and yes, those adults who disappear as the child advances in age, those adults who do not know the comorbid mental health issues of the child, they will decide for the parents whether socially transitioning is the best interest of their child. Secret two is that parents will be adjudicated abusive without even knowing that they've been accused, guilty until proven innocent, because the nefarious authors of AB 1955 and Assemblyman Al Maratucci believe that all parents are abusive and cannot be trusted with knowing that their child is suffering from an acute distress with their natural body, which is gender dysphoria, a mental health issue that is contained in the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Illness. After I disenrolled my daughter from her grooming school that called her a boy, those teachers said that my daughter needed a safe space to be her authentic self. After I pulled her from the school, they never called her. They never checked to see how she was doing. They damaged my daughter and then disappeared, leaving me to undo the severe psychological damage that they perpetrated on my depressed daughter. It's ironic, isn't it, that when the Democrats are mandating more and more forced transgender education on our children, medical providers and employers that they always use the threat of suicide. First, it was 41% of all trans-identified kids contemplate suicide. Then it was 78% last year. Now it's 87%. I dare those voting for this bill to explain just how keeping suicidality of a child from the parents makes that child safe. Ask them, press, ask them how hiding a child's heightened suicide risk makes a child safe. Thank you so much. Okay, the hearing on this bill is starting in five minutes, so we're gonna head over there now. Thank you all so much for being here.